Okay, in this video we're going to talk about something called the discriminant. And in order to talk about the discriminant, we need to talk about the quadratic formula. And the quadratic formula is just a formula that you can use to solve a quadratic equation for x. And in particular, if you have a quadratic equation, and it's in this form, which we're used to seeing, this is the standard form of a quadratic expression, and if you have that set equal to zero, then x is just going to be equal to all of this right here, which you can see involves a and b and c, which are just these coefficients here, a, b, and c, that we're used to seeing. And so the quadratic formula is basically this big kind of hairy expression right here. And you might be saying to yourself, well, why would I want to use this big complicated formula to solve a quadratic equation when I already know how to solve a quadratic equation using factoring, and factoring is a lot easier than doing all of this ugly looking arithmetic in here. Well, it turns out factoring typically is the preferred method, although sometimes you have an expression that you can't factor. And if that's the case, then you might have to use the quadratic formula. And it turns out that there's a particular piece of the quadratic formula that is this part right here that's underneath the radical sign. This part right here, which by the way, that's the part that's called the discriminant. This piece right here is a particularly important part of the quadratic formula. We're going to see why right now. So take a look at this example here. It says solve this quadratic equation, x squared plus 2x plus 3. So I would probably typically say, well, OK, I need to factor this expression, right? I've got a equals 1, b equals 2 and c equals 3. So, and I can tell this is an easy case because it's got a 1 as the coefficient for x squared. So I just need to set up my x over here, do the diamond method. And let's see, I'm going to put the number 3, positive 3, up here in the top. And I'm going to put my b value, positive 2, down here in the bottom. And I need two numbers that will multiply together to give me 3 and add together to give me 2. And right away I can see what the problem is. There really aren't any numbers that will multiply together to give me 3 and add to give me 2. I'm, I'm tempted to say, well, 1 times 3, but 1 times 3 is 3, but 1 plus 3 is 2. And it turns out no matter what other numbers I might try, even if I try some you know, kind of weird numbers like maybe fractions or something, I can't find any numbers that will multiply to give me 3 and add together to give me 2. This expression cannot be factored. There are no factors of this expression. Well, so then I might be tempted at this point to say, oh, well, I guess you know I, I can't solve this equation, except we can solve it because we have this thing called the quadratic formula, which means that I could say, well, I can solve this for x by using this formula that I just learned about, negative b plus and minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all divided by 2a. And so even though that does look kind of complicated, all I really need to do is just take these values a, b, and c and plug them in to my formula. Well, so let's see what that looks like. I would have x equals, okay, negative b, so that's going to be negative 2 plus or minus, and we're going to talk about that a little bit more in a minute, plus or minus the square root of, let's see, b squared, so that's going to be 2 squared minus 4 times a, a is 1, times c, and c is 3, all divided by 2 times a, which is 1. Okay, so let's, let's see if we can simplify this a little bit. Negative, and in particular, I can see all this stuff here under the radical sign. I, I, can, I can simplify that a good bit. So negative 2, that's just negative 2, plus or minus the square root of, okay, so let's see. I got 4, 2 squared is 4. So that's going to be 4 minus, 4 times 1 is 4, and 4 times 3 is 12. So I've got 4 minus 12, all divided by 2. And I'm starting to see a problem here because I noticed that under the radical sign here, I've got 4 minus 12. Well, 4 minus 12 is a negative number. 
And if I try to take the square root of a negative number, in this case negative 8, there is no square root of negative 8. Or more specifically, there's no real number that is the square root of negative 8. And that's where this thing called the discriminant, and remember this part right here under the radical sign, this is called the discriminant. Discriminant. This part right here, it turns out if the discriminant is a negative number, like it is in this case. If I've got a negative number under the radical sign, then I know right away I don't have any real solutions to this quadratic equation. That is to say, all of my solutions are going to be imaginary numbers. So very often, in a situation like this, I might not even really be all that concerned about what the actual imaginary solutions are. All I really want to know is, are my solutions real or not? Do I have any real solutions or do I just have imaginary solutions? Well, that's what the discriminant is very often used for. The discriminant is used to tell me if I've got imaginary solutions or if I have real solutions. And in particular, if the discriminant, if the discriminant, I should say, if the discriminant is negative, Well, if my discriminant is negative, then I know my solutions must be imaginary. Solutions are imaginary. And for our purposes, if our solutions are imaginary, then we're just going to stop and say, OK, these are going to be imaginary solutions. And I'm not concerned right now with imaginary solutions. So now that I know these are imaginary, because my discriminant is negative, I'm just going to stop here.